Coach, how do you stop a guy like Ricky Williams? I don't know that you stop him. You just try to control him, slow him down a little bit. That's what we're going to try to do today. Good luck. Thank you. That's what everybody tries to do, and only Kansas State has been successful. So, folks, Texas to receive, and take a look at that. 1978 against SMU, the last time a kickoff was returned by the speedy one, Lamb Jones. Chris Brown will kick it off for the Big Red. Nebraska with the ball in the air. Texas with the first possession. Coming back is Jeremy Jones. Sprints to the right, got an alley, 20-25. Good, solid return out to the... 31-yard line. Let's meet the chilly starting lineup for the Texas Longhorns. The main man, Ricky Williams from San Diego. 71 touchdowns. The NCAA's all-time leader. Two outstanding receivers in Cavill and McGarrity. Texas is multi-dimensional this year. And the offensive line, keep an eye on number 75 from Spring, Texas, Octavius Bishop. And the quarterback, Major Applewhite, brings Ricky out of the eye formation. He'll be set behind Ricky Brown, the lead blocking back. An eye formation with a slot. They offset it with Brown. Draw play, Ricky. Out to about the 34-yard line. Picked up a couple and Tony Ortiz of this Nebraska defense. And there are some, as usual, outstanding players. Chad Kelsey, seven tackles for a loss. Leads the Nebraska team in that category. Jay Foreman, the son of the great Chuck Foreman, who is watching from the stands across the way. Mike Brown, the rover, number 21. Solid tackler. He'll press Williams on the front. Coach McBride with a press defense right now. Corners up on the wideouts down at the bottom of your screen. Now they back off. That's Ralph Brown, and they run into the hole. Here's Ricky, and he breaks that first tackle, and that is what he does so well, Dan, and that is break tackles. Well, Ricky told us exactly how he feels, he, what he has to do today to have a good game. I think the, the key for me is to go out there and attack them. So, you know, they're like, we're going to get this guy. And then the next thing you know, I'm, I'm coming after them, and it kind of makes them back off a little bit because they're like, it's going to be a long day if this is the guy we're going to chase all day. So as long as I make the first statement, then I'll be, I'll be okay. I think you made the first statement on that run, man. Breaking two tackles. Great combination of power and speed. Here we are, third and one for the Horns. Apple wide under center, and he'll buck right straight ahead with two penalty flags come flying. One was thrown from behind the play by the referee and the other by the side judge. Prior to the snap. This is Hal Dowden. And he's going, look at this. Yes, how appropriate. From Ebener, Oklahoma, the retired funeral director. Prior to the snap, ball start. On the out there. Five yard penalty, still third down. And early mistake like that against Texas could bury this team. Mac Brown knows his team has to get off to a fast start against Nebraska because when they get ahead, they go from being a great team to a really great team in Max Works. Ryan Nunez checks in as one of the wideouts and the fullback will leave. So that will give him an extra wideout behind young Major Applewhite, redshirt freshman. Moving up under center now and facing a third and six. Changes up with his wide men. Tough to hear sometimes if you're out wide and on the visiting team. Apple White rolls. Fires complete for the first down. That is a clutch pass by the redshirt freshman as he nails Wayne McGarity with the first reception of this game. And, you know, when you look at the way he operated there, he changed the uh, play at the line of scrimmage. Very coolly rolled out to the right. Watch the pressure as he has to step up between Ortiz on the outside, 37. Rather, Eric Johnson in throw a perfect strike. And again, Applewhite barking out the play at the line of scrimmage on a check with me on first and 10. Here's the toss. Here's Ricky. Short side alley. Williams explodes for 10 more yards before Mike Brown pushes him out of bounds. 
Now Greg Davis would love to see that all day. He breaks down his goals in three areas here. Four plus yards on first down, almost half the time would be nice. And then the third down efficiency, 45% of the time. 80% in the red zone is key for Texas today against Nebraska. Got to score when you get those opportunities. 19 yards early on for Ricky Williams if you're keeping track. Start of the day, trailing Tony Dorsett, 444, and he's picked up 19 early. First down again for the Horns. A smart-looking opening drive. Ricky on a spinner, and he's eaten up. Negative yardage that time for Ricky Williams, who came back as a senior. And the impact that he has made, rushing touchdowns, total touchdowns, points for non-kickers and overall. Second in six other records, tied for three, smashing one record after another. And a big day today would give him a huge boost in his hopes to win the Heisman Trophy. Second down and 11. Applewhite, pocket holds, good blocking. Two for two as he hits Cavill with his first reception. So one completion to McGarity and one to Cavill. We told you that on the wings, Texas had two very talented receivers to keep this defense loose. Well, the pass protection's real good for Applewhite, but at the end of this play, he's gonna get sandwiched, and he came up limping. It looked like he hurt his left leg a little bit there after the hit how long he can go, but he's in real pain as he approaches the line of scrimmage. With a third and one, you would expect him to hand it off to Ricky. Brown is in front of him, checking with the tailback. Here is the toss play. Great block by Brown. The fullback smashes in Brown for the game way, and Williams picked up the first down, just short of the 30-yard line. Well, how do you stop Ricky Williams in this Texas offense? Charlie McBride says he must hold Texas to uh, less than 285 yards in total offense. Now, the 13 or fewer points, Nebraska so far the, on the season are averaging 12.8 per game. Allowed. First down and 10 for Applewhite. Pulls back. Pump fake now goes deep sideline. Incomplete. It'll be second down and 10. And in that defensive spot, number 44, Jay Foreman. And we asked him who he keys on in that Texas offense. Here's what he had to say. For Texas, the biggest key is their fullback. And, uh, you know, because he leads the way for Ricky Williams. So wherever he's lined up is usually where the ball is going to go. That certainly was the case on that third down play on the toss. And Brown just buried the outside linebacker on that play. Brown is offset to the left now on second down and 10. He'll go in motion. Stutter step, lead block right. Here comes Ricky to the middle. Fumble! Texas retains possession, but Ricky Williams coughs it up for the first time here today. Now, wait a minute. Now, Nebraska's jumping up and down and saying that we've got the ball. But the official, our retired field director, says no. Texas has the ball. Six fumbles on the year now for Ricky Williams. He's lost four of them. That was a key recovery for Texas. The man who came out of there was Lauren Kaiser, number 91, who had possession of the football, took it away underneath the pile. And there is Coach Mack, 17 years here at Nebraska. Third down and 11, out of Chicago. Outstanding defensive coordinator for the Cornhusker. Longtime member, obviously, of Tom Osborne's staff. And White comes on the field. Three wide receivers, and the line judge stops it. And timeout is being called by Nebraska. They use an early timeout here in the first period. So we'll take a break and come right back. A conversation earlier this week with Texas coach Matt Brown, he stressed the fact that the Horns had to start early, not let Nebraska seize command of this game. Well, here comes the 10th play of the opening drive of the game for Texas coach Matt Brown and the Horns. Here's third down and 11, a four wide out package. The reason why Nebraska called a timeout. Texas elects to spread the field. Three up now to the wide side. Shotgun Apple White Major coming down to the end zone. Deep right. Incomplete. And a 
shot, and there's a penalty flag, which comes late. Wayne McGarity, the intended receiver in the end zone, and you could see Erwin Sweeney was being picked on, shrugging as he came back out of the end zone. And Sweeney thought he made a good play on the ball, but the officials say, no, you didn't, Erwin. McGarity's a real burner on the outside, and Sweeney's been picked on a lot this year. Ball's going to be a little bit underthrown here. And there's the contact, and there comes the flag right after the contact. So many young corners, Dan, don't get turned around quickly to look at the football, and that'll be a penalty every time as Applewhite goes down on the artificial turf here in Lincoln after releasing the football. Solich watching now as his defense is under fire. Texas marches to the Nebraska. 17-yard line with a first down on their opening drive. There's the draw play. Ricky spins for a couple of yards, but no more. Jason Wiltz there in the middle, and he has replaced Steve Warren, who will not play today. Warren back home attending the funeral of his grandmother, so Wiltz has to hold the fort there in the middle of that defensive line. And many times we'll see Ricky Williams follow his fullback, Ricky Brown, but other times he'll just uh, see an alley and go for it by himself. He's got great vision. He's the entire field. Second down and nine. Applewhite, good protection. Got a man wide open. Touchdown, Texas! All alone in the end zone is Derek Lewis. Like a dagger to Nebraska. Two years ago, he caught that fourth and inches pass to set up the upset in the inaugural Big 12 championship game. Now he comes in to Lincoln, Nebraska, and scores the first touchdown of the game. Chris Stockton. Chris Stockton on the field for the extra point. Seven nothing. The crowd quiet at Memorial Stadium. Missouri took the lead at the half a week ago, but this is an even more impressive performance by Texas. And this tight end, Derek Lewis, gets wide open in the secondary. And then watch the concentration. He knows he's got six. The horn score first. So Derek Lewis, an aspiring stand-up comedian, only no one's laughing here in Lincoln right now after that touchdown catch, putting the horns ahead by seven points. And it was their first drive of the game, something you do not see very often when you come through big red country. This will be Walker from the two. An explosive return man and down at the 20-yard line. Time now for Smith Barney Remembers, the 1996 Big 12 Championship. It was Texas, Nebraska. It was late, nursing a three-point lead. It was James Brown. Roll left. And instead of keeping it, he throws it off to Derrick Lewis, 61 yards. And from there, it was Priest Holmes storming into the end zone. And Texas stuns Nebraska, 37-27. And now Lewis gives the Horns a seven-point lead here in Lincoln. First possession from Monte Cristo. Monte changes up at the line with Carl Buckhalter as his high back. Macavica, the fullback, moves straight into the heart of that defense. Not only is Newcomb out with an injury, but D'Angelo Evans unable to play today as Casey Hampton makes the stop. Here's the touchdown play right here. Lewis goes to the corner, and two men go after the fullback, Ricky Brown, in the flat. Good protection. There's the easy throw, and there's uh, Ricky Brown being covered by two guys. Second down and eight. Ball on the 23. Buck calls up middle. First down, Nebraska to the 32-yard line. Now your Chili's starting lineup. Makovica, the powerful fullback, outstanding student. Won an $18,000 scholarship this week. First Matt Davison. Nebraska. He's a leading receiver here of the Cornhuskers. And the offensive line is rebuilding. He's the only returning starter, Josh Heskew. How would you like to shop for a shirt with a 21 and a half <laughs> inch size neck, huh, folks? By two shirts. <laughs> First all together. Ten, but there he is. Down in the middle, ready to snap. He opened the way on that last play. Play fake. 
Frank Kapika pounds the middle. At the 36 yard line. Christo is known as a good ball handler. Aaron Humphrey on that one defensive end will certainly have to be alert when Christo brings that option down to his side. Dusty Renfro in that Big 12 championship game played in St. Louis. He made 20 tackles that day. Joe Walker, the defensive backfield. They don't throw often, but when they do, they can be lethal. And Walker well aware of that. Second down and five for Christo. Buck Halter powers his way to the 39. This will be third down and short now. An ABC Sports presentation of college football is brought to you by the new Dodge. It is about change. The document company Xerox, keep the conversation going, share the knowledge. Solomon Smith Barney, let's get to work, success is earned. And Burger King, if you ask us, it just tastes better. Overcast, rain headed in this direction, but it has held off so far here today in Lincoln. Seven and a half minutes, Lance Brown in as one of the wide receivers now for Christo and the Cornhuskers. Option comes down the line, Christo keeps it. Not much doing there. Still short of the first down as Aaron Humphrey, along with Anthony Hicks, make the stop for the Horns. Frank Solich is the head coach, but he's also the offensive coordinator, as Tom Osborne was. He wants to have more big plays for this offense. Got to dominate the time of possession to keep Ricky Williams off the field, and he feels that uh, they have an advantage in the kicking game. Well, here's an opportunity to prove that they have that advantage. Bill LaFleur trots into punt as the Nebraska drive stalls and this crowd is not used to being behind early Hodges Mitchell back to return for the horns powerful punt takes a Texas hop and comes back out for the Cornhuskers I should say that was a Nebraska bounce as it came back away from the end zone and there is that kicking game again trying to make a living off great field position Nebraska buries Texas inside the 10 timeout with election day just a couple of days away equal time so Mac Brown says his keys as head coach of Longhorns equal in the kicking game time into the game early they've done that but most importantly get Ricky his touches Major Applewhite, he drove Texas 68 yards in 11 plays with their first series. This time, they're coming out from inside the 10-yard line. Here comes Williams to the 12-yard line. His eighth carry of the game. And uh, Mac Brown on what it will take to upset Nebraska today. We've got to protect the ball. We've got to be two-dimensional on offense, which we've been able to, to uh, accomplish throughout the year. And we've got to play great run defense and, and force Nebraska to throw the ball some. Uh, we've got to balance out the kicking game. And we're really young in our kicking game, and they do such a great job at Nebraska in their kicking game. I've always admired the way they, they coach it. But uh, the other thing we need to do is get into the game. And they are into this one now. Applewhite on a roll in trouble. Going down at the eight-yard line. Dan, that one had the look of a busted play the way he rolled over there to the right side that time. Now that's what happens when a guy like Vandenbosch gets in your face as soon as you turn around after the fake. I would have liked to have seen Major Applewhite just throw that ball away and save those yards. It's up a tough third and ten. Ricky Williams in the early going to be keeping track. Eight carries for 25 yards. Right around three yards a carry, which is just exactly what McBride wants to hold him to. Third down and ten. Here's that draw play look again. Nebraska has to watch Ricky for the draw play. He's down at the 11-yard line. It was whistled down, even though it was scooped up and uh, hauled on into the end zone by Eric Johnson, the fastest member of this Nebraska team. He, of course, had a big game against Missouri a week ago, and now the Huskers Force Texas into a three and out, and their all-purpose kicker Chris Stockton will kick it to Joe Walker, and this should give Nebraska great field position. Walker is standing at midfield. Nice punt. Fielded at the 44-yard line. And they surround him on the return. Down at the uh, four, 47 yard line. And a reminder that tomorrow we've got the final round of the Tour Championship. Coming your way is live at 2 Eastern Time. BJ Singh is still the leader there. 
Here, Texas with an early 7-0 lead over Nebraska and 4.33 to go in the first quarter. Here's that sound here, folks. You never know who you're going to run into on Halloween. Kenny Cheatham coming off the injured list into the Nebraska lineup for the first time here today. Fumble! And recovered by Nebraska. Buck Halter appeared to jump back on the loose football. Well, that's one thing that hurt uh, Monte Cristo last week against Missouri. He fumbled twice, and one of them was a quarter quarterback center exchange, just like that one. One thing about Monte Cristo is the coaches say he has small hands, and sometimes small hands have trouble with that big old football. And the Huskers break the huddle behind Heskew. Second down and 11. The ball at the 46 yard line. Cristo rolls, now goes down. And it is complete on the sideline and wide open on that play with Sheldon Jackson. They'd have walked in for a touchdown, but they blew the open man. Let us go to the open man in New York, John Saunders. Brent, we'll take you to the Burger King update. Ohio State against Indiana. David Boston lets it bounce, picks it up, and then takes off. 70 yards on this punt return. His fifth touchdown in the last three games. As he gets the Buckeyes on top, 7-0. Brent. John, we're back here at 7-0. Texas with the lead. Fake by Crystal. Looking this way and down. Fumble! and they rule it down anyway. They say Christo's knee was on the ground. The referee right there on top of the play. That time as Christo rolled, he looked back for his tight end. It was covered. And Anthony Hicks, the junior from Richardson, Texas, delivered the blow. And what surprised me, uh, Frank Solich changes quarterbacks on the next possession and brings in Eric Crouch. He said he wanted to get him into the game early. And Christo's not having any success at all. Bill LaFleur back to punt. Hodges Mitchell again from the 11 yard line, this time with a fair catch. So let's check in the NFL schedule Sunday night, Oakland and Seattle. Raiders defense playing much better this year. And Troy Aikman returns for the Cowboys. Dallas goes into Philadelphia. That should be a layup for Dallas. But then again, I thought it was a layup for Kansas City last Monday night, so uh, <laughs> how much we don't know. <laughs> All right, first down and 10. Major Applewhite and the Horns leading 7 nothing here. Two and a half minutes in the opening quarter. Bill is the motion receiver. Here is the toss to Ricky Williams. Got an alley and explodes into a 25. Look out, got great speed. 40. Out to midfield with Ricky Williams. Ricky picks up 38 more yards, and now he's inside a 400 on Tony Dorsett. Great block again by the lead man. Ricky Brown on the outside. Derek Lewis gets a good block at tight end. But look at this hole here. And now watch the speed of Ricky Williams. Finley had the angle, and now Finley's chasing, and Finley ain't catching up. The Horns leading by seven. And at midfield already behind their redshirt freshman, Major Applewhite, who seems to grow with each game for Coach Brown and the Horns, comes right back. And Ricky pounds for another yard before Mike Rucker, who stepped up big in a couple of huge third downs last week against Missouri, stands in the hole and makes the stop on Ricky Williams, who's simply an amazing running back when you consider the, the records that have toppled. And remember, he has not played for outstanding Texas teams. You can make the argument that under Mac Brown, this is the best Texas team that he has played for. 70 yards already, averaging better than six yards a pop, largely because of that last huge run. Not the short one, second nine. Here he comes again, toss play, stretches the field. He gets by the first man, out of bounds, but he picks up another eight yards, and Mike Brown crashes into him. The rover on that side, number 21, outstanding football player. But you can see when Ricky Brown, and folks, he weighs 230 pounds. 
when he turns it up and accelerates, they say he's one of the fastest baseball players they've ever timed running from home to first base. You know, and Nebraska's got great team speed. Look at Carlos Polk, number 13. He can't keep up with the big the big man. Watch the big shot right there by Mike Brown. Third down and one, and they show a passing by splitting the backs, and Applewhite simply bucks right straight ahead for the first down. He's done that once already today. Major Applewhite. Interesting name, isn't it? And he was named, folks, for a running back from Alabama that you might remember by the name of Major Ogilvy. His father heard the name on the radio driving home before mom gave birth. And it looks almost like he's Tom Osborne's son. I mean, that is Major Applewhite on the right and the retired coach Osborne there on the left. Remarkable similarity. Only on Halloween. Huh? That's Erie. First down and 10. Applewhite. Great protection. Middle wide open. And he puts it back into Cavill's hands, the motion man. I want to tell you, this offensive line with Bishop, Raisler, Gascamp, Adams, and Humphrey, they, Dan Fouts, are doing an outstanding job. They're combining great run blocking, as we've seen, for Ricky Williams, and they've given Applewhite great time to throw. That time there, it looked like Applewhite had five seconds to find his receiver come open over the middle. First down and 10. The Horns march back inside the 25-yard line. Have a hard time figuring out who's the favorite of this game. If you showed up just to watch it without knowing anything about these two teams. Apple White stands tall, throws Lewis incomplete. And another penalty flag comes flying. Double coverage on the tight end that time, going into the end zone. And the penalty flag with Ortiz and Finley covering is thrown by the back judge. And the Huskers are saying it's against Derek Lewis. And it is. I'm not sure why Major Applewhite was going for Lewis. He was covered by two men, and that kind of forced Lewis to fight for his life trying to get to the football. This is a huge penalty here. Not a whole lot of contact, a little push there, but certainly. Please spare me, okay? Not enough to go call that penalty. Uh, this is not flag football. <laughs> Wait a minute. First out at uh, the 25, but it is Halloween. There's ghosts, and gremlins, and all that sort of thing. First out at 25, ball on the 38 yard line. Here's the toss to Ricky, swinging to the left. The force man, he got past him, but not. Tony Ortiz knocked out of bounds. And, uh, you know, we've got to congratulate our colleague down on the field, Jack Aru. Folks, he became a grandfather last night, his daughter giving birth to a, to a little boy. Little boy named Evan Benjamin Jones. And congratulations, Grandpa Jack Aru. Let's go down to Grandpa. Well, Brent, I'm speechless. <laughs> I'll tell you what, it was a lot of fun. But, you know, as we watched What did you Texas have to team, do with it? <laughs> Brent, as we, nothing. As, <laughs> Never mind. Oh, we'll be right back, Grandpa. Don't go away. Second down and 20 now for the Horns. Applewhite slips. Penalty flag is thrown on the play, and they will sort this one out. The line judge throwing it against Texas as he comes back to the formation. Jack, you uh, you were down in Texas, and the Major Applewhite's done quite a job for the Horns, hasn't he? Yeah, Brenny has, and in fact, he's rallied the troops not only around Ricky Williams, but around this team. He's been embraced by Mac Brown, and Mac Brown has told the team he wants them to have fun. And Major Applewhite is one of the kids that likes to have fun. And he also is a big Bama fan, as you said, but you know the one thing that he did, Brent, when he was a youngster, he talked his way into the locker room in Tuscaloosa, went up post for a picture with his with his hero, Jay Barker. He still has that picture. It's a good thing the Bear didn't catch it. Second down at 25. He'd have made sure he showed up at Alabama. That may be the only football camp the young man didn't attend. He is a fanatic about the history of college football. Second down and 25 for the major. And uh, I believe there might have been encroachment that time. Let's let's see how they sort this one out. They might have got Lauren Kaiser 
Number 91 for Nebraska in the neutral zone. Quick snap by Gas Camp. Prior to the snap, offside on the defense. Five yard penalty, still taken down. Heads up play by Gas Camp, hiking the ball to his quarterback. So he needs only 363 yards. He, four games left in the regular season for Texas, had to average 111 yards. Came in today, 444 yards behind Dorsett. He's played in the Philadelphia Phillies organization for each of the last four years, but this year for Ricky, something new. He left the minor leagues eight weeks early, gave up paychecks for eight weeks to come back and lift weights and get ready for his senior season. Second down and 20. Apple White, great protection. Got another reception into the hands of McGarity. So McGarity and Cavill starting to carve up this Nebraska secondary here almost at will. They're getting wide open, and the offensive line is giving Texas plenty of protection. Is this going to be trick or a treat? For Cornhusker fans, they're a little uneasy right now. Oh my goodness, happy Halloween to our camera. So you're off and you're the head coach of an unbeaten football team, and so what do you do? Barry Alvarez says, I'm going back to my alma mater. He was a linebacker here at Nebraska, and head coach Frank Solich, who was a fullback, is one of Barry's very close friends. In fact, Frank almost went up to Barry's Wisconsin team to become the offensive coordinator, but he elected to stay here with Coach Osborne and now has become Osborne's successor. So here we go for the Horns, up seven, third and six, starting the second quarter. The wind is at their back now, and Applewhite got end zone. No, incomplete. And it will be field goal time coming up for the Horns. But again, as I told you, the wind is at Stockton's back. And Stockton's done a good year, good uh, job so far this year, hitting seven of nine field goals. This is well within his range. And this will give uh, the Longhorns an unthinkable 10 point lead over the Cornhuskers. Jay Humphrey, the long snapper. It's a 36 yard attempt. Brian White puts the ball down. And Stockton boosts Texas to a 10-0 lead over Nebraska in Lincoln. Time now for our Home Depot coaches fact. As Frank Solich finds himself trailing by 10 points, we mentioned that he was a running back here. Not only that, he was the first back to rush for 200 yards in a game for Nebraska. He did it back in 1965 against the Air Force Academy. Here is a look at Frank Solich. 1,000 career rushing yards and uh, he liked to wear those pants up a little bit, didn't he, Dad? Well, you know, that old number 45 barely got that, that number shown in that jersey. But uh, a lot of people realize what a great running back he was here at Nebraska. Well, what do you think here, partner, with Texas striking for 10 points? I think Mac Brown hit it right on the nose. Get into this game early and make Nebraska come back. When they get things rolling, uh, when they get ahead, especially here at home, they're impossible to beat. They're impossible to beat here most of the time anyway. Now remember, Nebraska holds an edge in the kicking game. Solich looking for a return here. The wind is at Stockton's back. He'll try to drive it deep, and he does. Caught by Walker. He'll take a knee, and it'll come out on the 20-yard line. So far for Texas, it's all working pretty good, especially on defense, where they've only given up uh, 16 total yards to Nebraska. The big thing about this feather the option, that means that to delay the quarterback's decision to run or pitch the ball on the option play. Try to string things out as far as possible all the way to the sideline. So far today, it's all working pretty good. At least in that first quarter for Carl Reese and the Longhorns. Now, Monte Cristo still in, but you can see Eric Crouch starting to limber up on the sideline. He's the redshirt freshman. Started a couple of games, but he too has been injured, just coming back from that. Crystal with a great play fake goes down. Get rid of wide open. 
crosses midfield to the 45-yard line. Shevin Wiggins, and it was Monte Cristo's ability to handle the ball. Watch the play fake, and then the 36-yard play. Well, the fake, it's, it goes away from the grain. It's a bootleg. There's the fake to Buckhalter, and there's nobody around Monte Cristo, and he makes this pass count. Wiggins behind Jammer and McCown, both safeties. Big play for the Longhorns. They needed it. Or rather, the Hornets. First and 10 for Nebraska. Fumble! Nebraska recovers, but it is the second fumble by the quarterback and we should point out one of the things that the coaches are concerned about in bad weather with Christo is the fact that his hands are small and it's difficult in these weather conditions to handle the ball. Now this is one of his two touchdowns last week against Missouri and here's the other one as he goes airborne but it was this fumble with 138 to play on the center exchange that gave Missouri a shot at the upset. A loss of two yards on that play. Quarterback keeper Christo steps into the secondary and then is stopped at the 39-yard line by McCowan, the strong safety. Stopped on the play by Donald McCowan. I tell you, there's nothing that makes a coach uh, more worried about his quarterback than the fact that he can't take the ball from the center. That's the simplest play. But we've seen two fumbles today. That's got to make uh, Solich think a little bit more about getting crouched in the ball game. Shotgun. Third down and five for Nebraska. Trailing Texas by 10. Here comes the blitz on the gun. Over the middle. Got the tight end, Jackson. But it's short of the first down. Are they going to say he dropped the ball? They're going to spot it. They're going to spot it just short of the first down. That will bring up fourth and one. So it will be fourth and one, trailing by 10. Nebraska would be expected to go at this spot on the field for Coach Solich. It's going to come up a good yard short, I think. Uh, Jackson with the catch, but he got tackled and pushed back immediately. And so far, game, see where the, where the post is. But it did give the Nebraska coaches a little extra time to make their decision on the play. Comes in from the sideline, Willie Miller, an extra fullback. Trots in, and they will line up in that power eye. Nebraska fans familiar with this formation down on the goal line. Bristow himself for the first down. He gets a push from Miller. Well, Ricky Williams, number two on the all-time list. And so, folks, our Aflac trivia question. How many Heisman trophies have the top five all-time rushers won? Let me give you their names. Doris Set, Ricky, Charles White, Herschel Walker, Archie Griffin. How many Heisman trophies have those top five all-time rushers won? You think about that a while. We'll come back with the answer. First down at 10. So you can look from behind the play. Bristow, play fake, got his tight end again. Drilled him for a first down. 13 yards on the play. And now starting to warm up is Sheldon Jackson, the 6'4 tight end. I'm sure Crisco sees Crouch warming up on the sideline. Question is, does Jackson get his feet down in time? Boy, he's got his right foot out of bounds and his uh, left foot inbounds. Boy, that is close. That is really close. Is that the same official that called offensive interference over there? First down and 10. Ball on the 19-yard line. Back on pickup. A warrior. To the 16-yard line. Back of stopped on the play. You do not often come to Lincoln, Nebraska on a Saturday afternoon to cover the Cornhuskers. And with 12 minutes to go in the first half, find them trailing 10-0. Yet that is the situation here. They trailed Missouri at the half a week ago before rallying. Now it is second down and seven. Tracy Wistrom, Grant's brother, in one tight end. Jackson, the other. And the play is stopped in the middle for about a yard and no more as Anthony Hicks, who has been very active, the strong side linebacker, 
for the Longhorns doing an outstanding job defensively. And what we haven't seen much from the Huskers offense is the option play. A lot of power with the eye back following the fullback, but not a whole lot of option. Cheatham and Wiggins onto the field. They will flex Jackson off the line and put the big fella into a slot. Basically four wide receivers in this formation. Christo going to keep it. That won't get him much as he's down at the 20 and Hicks again. Number 55 coming up big. It's the old double DiMaggio. So here is Chris Brown. It'll be a 37 yard attempt. Had one blocked last week. Croucher put it down for him. Pulled it to the left. Pulled it badly to the left. Misfiring. Chris Brown, normally the most reliable of kickers, misfires, and Nebraska still struggling. Timeout. Ricky Williams moving in on Tony Dorsett. 13 carries for 82 yards as Texas rushes out to a 10-point lead on favored Nebraska. And now with 10 and a half minutes to go, the Horns with possession coming out from the 20-yard line after the missed field goal by Brown. Here he is again, a rush of a couple of yards as the black shirts of Nebraska, led by Brian Shaw, were ready. An ABC Sports presentation of college football brought to you by the all-new Grand Am with solid form design. It's excitement, well-built from Pontiac. National car rental, so what are you waiting for? Let's go. Sleep in. And Chili's, a proud sponsor of ABC College Football. Look, chilly here today. Yes, it is, my friend. Hmm? Second down at 11. Loss of a yard that time for Ricky. So they send him out. And he'll sit down in a flanker position. And Major will throw back down to the inside. And that loosened it up for the fullback. A very well-designed play that time. And Ricky Brown picks up nine yards on the play before Eric Johnson makes the stop. Ricky Brown doesn't get a lot of touches. But last week, here he is right here. He's just going to come out and over the middle. And watch this pass protection again for Major Applewhite. There's nobody within five yards of the quarterback, and he's got a lane to throw through. McGarrity is off to the left. Here's Ricky. Stopped at the line of scrimmage. Well, speaking of Barry Alvarez, he's down below with Grandpa. Let's go to Jack Arrow. Uh, they're calling me Grandpa again, Coach. Your impressions of this game so far? It's a fun game to watch. It's it's really interesting for me to watch. Uh, I haven't seen either, either uh -huh. one of these teams, so it's it's fun to watch uh, the two different styles of play. Uh, a lot of good athletes on the field, and it's uh, kind of an interesting football game right now. Well, we want to ask you a little bit about your ball team after this play, though. Okay. We're kind of interested in the fact that you're running the table, but you don't play Ohio State. Well, there's nothing we can do about it. I learned a long time ago, if you can't control it, don't worry about it. We'll talk to you in a minute. Stockton back in punt formation. Kind of a wobbly punt. Walker, 40-yard line. Now to the 42-yard line. So it's 10 nothing with the Longhorns. Leading the Cornhuskers, 8.24 left in the first half. Folks, this is absolutely amazing. Nebraska being held to 17 yards rushing. I mean, ordinarily, when you come in here, they get that on one play. I mean, in their first series, they're getting 30, 35 yards rushing. This smacks of what could be could be a big time upset if this continues. Texas is playing very well, looking well coached for this game, and Eric Crouch comes in at quarterback. He has replaced Monte Cristo. And here's Crouch. Late pitch to Buckholder, broke the first tackle, nothing doing. Let's go back now, now to Jack Aru. Jack? 
Coach, let's ask you real quickly about the BCS standings released and your situation. You've run the table, but you're not up there. Well, I still think there's a lot of football to be played. I think all that's going to play out. You know, we've got three games left. Some people have uh, four since you know, since it was released. So I, I don't get too worried about it. Uh, I just think that a lot's going to happen before it's all over with. Can you go to the Rose Bowl? We're going to find That's why you play. Hey, guys. Find out. <laughs> exactly. Second down and 14. And here is Eric Crouch, redshirt freshman, confidently to the middle of the pocket, and he hits Shevin Wiggins. Stop made by Jammer. Quentin Jammer. What a fine name that is for a safety, huh? <laughs> He'll jam you a little bit, Dan. Yeah, we got a couple of great safeties in this game. Mike Brown made a great defensive stop that last time out. He has eight tackles so far on the day, and we're just into the second quarter. And you know that 17 yards rushing for Nebraska? Well, make it 13 after that four-yard loss. Third down and five. This Buck Halter again trying to find the alley, and he did not because big number 50, Cedric Woodard, the junior defensive lineman, jumped into that spot and loomed like a big grizzly bear on a hiking path. You know, Carl Reese, the defensive coordinator, said they want to feather the option play. Well, that means kind got of to spring it out and, and make the uh, decisions delayed a little bit. Well, they're feathering it, but they're also hammering it. Totally shutting down the great Nebraska option offense. So on fourth and three, the Cornhuskers forced to punt again. Can't run, can't get first downs. They've used two quarterbacks. And Mitchell, waving everybody away for the fair catch, makes it at the 10-yard line. And that's where Texas will put it in play. So we'll take a break with Texas upsetting Nebraska 10-0 in the first half. How many Heisman trophies have the top five all-time rushers won? Ricky Williams hasn't won yet, but still they have won five. How can that be? We'll take a look. Tony Dorsett, Charles White, Herschel Walker, and right there, Dan, Archie Griffin of Ohio State with a pair of them. 74 and 75. Ricky would make it six. 6.19 to go in the first half. Major Applewhite. Ricky back at tailback. Gets another carry. Spins to the 14-yard line on first down. One of those trick-or-treat questions. And, uh, you know, there's no way that Ricky Williams won't get the Heisman Trophy if he goes on to overcome uh, this type of defensive player. That's a good Oh, man. And, and go on and get that rushing record because uh, that's uh, one of the all-time marks in college football. And uh, he's a good bet to get there. And about the five-minute mark. Six for the Horns and the Major. He's going to throw. The offensive line doing a great job. Cavill going deep, makes a catch at midfield. Oh, what a grab by Kwame Cavill. Up over Erwin Sweeney. Mac Brown said that Kwame had his best game ever last week against Baylor. He may revise that opinion after he sees this catch. And it was right in front of the Texas bench. Watch the concentration. It's a little bit underthrown. He had to check up just a bit and then go high for the catch. Great concentration here. It's perfect. I can just feel the folks in Austin gathering around the TV sets now. Inside midfield, leading by 10. A major back again. Snaps off another completion to the middle of the field. Inside the 45-yard line. Tom um, Kite probably watching our tour championship coverage down there. He and Ben Crenshaw, great golfers out of the University of Texas. And a reminder that tomorrow at 2 Eastern time, the tour championship, the final round out of Atlanta, is coming your way. Both those fellows, big time Longhorn football fans. Second down and four. The major comes up and eyes that Nebraska defense. The last time a visiting team won in Lincoln was 1991. Here's Ricky. Broke the first tackle, but Foreman rides him down at the 40-yard line. It'll be third and short. Yeah, Brent, one of the major concerns, excuse me, for Charlie McBride uh, the, as defensive coordinator for Nebraska is the size of the offensive line for Texas. He says, we're not very big up front, and they're huge. 
We have an official's timeout on the sideline, and I believe that Ralph Brown, the corner, was shaken up, and he is going off on that far side. There's one of the finest cornerbacks in college football. So Keo Craver checks in. McBride now has lost his best cover man. They don't pick on number 22. So Mack is hoping that number three, Craver, only a freshman, can hold up. Bump and run now. It's third down and short for the Horns. Here comes Ricky Stock in the hole. Foreman again leading the assault. The son of Chuck Foreman getting it done. Stop on the Two great stops for the black shirts on third down and short in consecutive possessions. Watch number 44, Foreman, and nobody is there to block him. That's got to be a broken play for the Longhorns. How do you not block the middle linebacker on a short yardage play? Chris Stockton back to punt for the Horns. One high, and Wiggins lets it bounce, and the Horns down it on the two-yard line. So this time, it is the Texas punting game with Chris Stockton burying Nebraska inside the five. Three eleven to go now, and Nebraska's offense comes back out. up inside the five yard line red shirt freshman at quarterback that power eye look Dodge keeps it steps free to the secondary comes out to the 20 yard line best run of the game for a Cornhusker and it's Eric Crouch 17 yards for Crouch in the Cornhuskers dearly needed that to get off their own goal line and get something going here as we come to the end of the first half. Just inside of three minutes to work with. Nebraska with two timeouts remaining. They dearly want to get something on the board against Mac Brown and the Longhorns here to go into the locker room, being shut out. So it'll be Crouch getting protection. Goes far side and he overthrows the wide man. And that was Kenny Cheatham, number six, out of bounds and down over there. And a reminder that John Saunders and Todd Blackledge will have scores and highlights from around the country coming up on the Valvoline halftime 98. Tony Holmes with coverage on Cheatham. And it goes to second down and 10. It has been a long time, folks, since Nebraska was shut out at home by anybody. Second down and 10. The two tight ends, Wistrom and Jackson. Crouch snaps it off, almost intercepted. He threw behind Jackson, and the pass was almost picked off by Jammer, and a penalty flag is thrown, and there is a personal foul against Texas. They roughed Eric Crouch. Gave him fresh life. What a big penalty this is. Good pressure against Crouch. Hands to the place. And there's the flag right there on Cedric Woodard. Ball was thrown behind Jackson. Watch the uh, two hands of Woodard hit Crouch right in the chops. No question about the foul connected with that face mask. And the penalty brings the ball out to the 34-yard line with two and a half minutes to go. Buck Halter is the eye back behind Crouch. Option to the short side. Crouch going to keep it all the way. It's another alley. Crouch down at midfield. He's flung down by Jammer. Stopped on the play. So it is the running Dan of Eric Crouch that is starting to loosen things up here for Nebraska. Well, he went 17 yards right off his own goal line. This one will go for 15 more. But right now, that what Nebraska is doing is they're just blocking the option better. They're taking care of Humphrey on the uh, right side and allowing the quarterback to get the corner. And Eric is very decisive when he sees the hole. Buck Halter comes back to the left. 
picked up a couple of yards before he is blown dead at the 48 yard line. McCowan and Anderson there for the horns. And a reminder that at the conclusion of the game, we'll select the Chevrolet most valuable player from each team in a recognition. The athlete Chevrolet will make a contribution to each school's general scholarship fund. Remember, Nebraska had to use a timeout in the first quarter, so they only have two remaining here in the first half. And there's an illegal substitution penalty against the Cornhuskers. They had 12 men in the huddle, and Jackson jogged out. That's going to cost them five yards prior to the snap. Prior to the snap, illegal substitution against the offense. We have five-yard penalty, still second down. Let's check in with Jack Aru, Jack. Well, guys, you know, last week against Missouri, Nebraska was almost in the same situation, trailing the Tigers going into halftime. Their captain, Joel McAvicka, took control of that halftime and gave a speech to his players, telling them that he wanted them to play for, uh, with 100%, 110%, or don't suit up. They came back and won. I wonder if McAvicka's going to do the same at this halftime. We shall see. Second down and 11 now. Crouch in trouble. Going to have to sprint away and nothing doing. Play was disrupted quickly by Aaron Humphrey, the defensive end. He forced Crouch to come upfield that time, and Dusty Renfro, 46, was waiting. Boy, and uh, Carl Reese should get some credit here, the defensive coordinator, for calling this blitz. Hicks coming from the outside, and nobody uh, except the Buckhalter picks up Humphrey. And there's the uh, good team defense by the Longhorns. When Carl Reese was the coordinator at Missouri in the 80s, he used to blitz Nebraska repeatedly. It was one of his MOs as a defensive coordinator. Crouch fires off the screen to Buckhalter. Nothing but room, and he marches for the first down to the 40-yard line. 105 to go, and what's important in the college game is that the clock stops on the first down. And yeah, this is a great screen pass. Watch the blocking here. Gesford at right tackle pushes Humphreys up the field. And now after the ball is in the hands, 55 there. That's Russ Hochstein with a good block to get his running back the first down. They wind the clock again down inside of a minute. Crouch. Near side and it is complete to Matt Davison. His first reception of the game. Out of bounds, but they pick up seven yards. They stop the clock. Two timeouts left and 50 seconds. Nebraska has missed one field goal already in the first half. And Crouch will attempt to get him. First, he'll try to strike to the end zone if he can. If not, get close enough for Chris Brown to attempt another field goal. Second down and three now. The ball on the 33-yard line. Crouch marches ahead. Very close. As he reached out to the 30-yard line, but the clock is still running. Not you know, using the, a timeout. Well, you know what they were waiting for? They're waiting officials for the officials to use an official timeout to uh, get the change out there. But, you know, the quarterback can, in that instance, can call a timeout and then have the uh, officials take it away with an official timeout because they need to get the chains out there to see if he got enough for the first down. That's exactly what was going on. And when the side judge went over close to Coach Solich, he let him know that the clock should have been stopped in that situation. There is the first down. It should have been stopped right away. At least five first seconds run off on Nebraska in that situation. Because when they pick up a first down, clock stops. Last week against Missouri, Nebraska had trouble managing the clock at the end of the first half and had to settle for a field goal. Now winding down toward 30 seconds again. Shotgun look from Crouch. Going to run back up the middle. Runs away from the defense. Spins to the 12 yard line to get it stopped, and they do. But now with the clock stopped and 19 seconds, they have an opportunity here to throw a couple of passes on into the end zone before they attempt the field goal. Let's check in now with Jack Aroot. Guys, if you look closely at if you look closely at Ricky Williams' helmet, it carries a number 47 in a tribute to Doak Walker, a friend that he met. Number 37, excuse me, in, in tribute to, to his friend Doak Walker. Now later at the Cotton Bowl, you see he wore the same number. This was the place that Doak built. In the locker room afterwards, eight members of the Walker family received that jersey. 
as a tribute from Ricky Williams to his friend. And what a nice man he was. Doug Walker passing away after suffering a tragic ski accident out in Colorado. And he was one of my first heroes, Dan. I remember growing up, one of the few athletes when I was a youngster that I ever wrote a letter to and asked for an autograph. Somewhere I've still got a black and white photograph, postcard, signed by Doug Walker on the back. He was, he was such a great player. You better dig it out, Brent, because that is a great uh, great thing to have. And I just want to pass my uh, words to Malo along to Skeeter and family up there and Steamboat Spring. You bet. 19 seconds to go here in the uh, first half. Eric Crouch from the shotgun forced out of it and going to be sacked at the 25. They'll have to quickly call a timeout. Rogers. They get it stopped at the 10 second mark, but it a huge defensive play it was on that sack. And Texas, uh, not known for a great pass rush this year. Only 10 sacks on the year coming into today's game. That one's huge because that makes this a very long field goal for Chris Brown, kicking into the wind. Instant pressure against Crouch as Rodgers comes around the outside and is picked up too late. And a reminder, next week we've got a doubleheader coming your way on ABC. It's Penn State and Michigan. That should be a dandy. And then here in this area, it'll either be Colorado, Missouri, or Oklahoma State and Texas, depending the outcome of this game. Ten seconds remain in the first half in Lincoln. And Nebraska riding that gaudy home winning streak. Haven't lost here since 1991. Beaten by Washington. In fact, their last two losses, those teams have gone on to win national championships. It was Washington in 91 and Colorado the previous year. That's the last two teams to come in here and win football games. Now, 10 seconds. Second down and 24. And Crouch fires. End zone. Incomplete. Beat him the intended. There's the penalty. It comes out late. With four ticks of the clock left, Holmes apparently draws the flag, and it was a late one. On the outside here is Holmes, and if you watch this play at the very end, what you'll see is that uh, when the ball's in the air, Holmes will cut the receiver off. He takes an angle there. Pushes him to the outside, and that, my goodness, that's two calls on pass interference against Texas. One on offense and one on defense that I think are absolutely ridiculous. That was a fine play by Tony Holmes. Came in the same corner of the end zone. So with four seconds to go, Chris Brown on the field attempting to put Nebraska on the scoreboard with a 27-yard field goal attempt. Crouch is the holder. From the right hash, pulls this one right through that time. And Nebraska on the scoreboard as the first half comes to an end. With Texas, a three-touchdown underdog, leading 10-3. Timeout. Back root, coach's comments. Well, Brent, Matt Brown told the Longhorns of Texas that they've got to remember that this is a four-quarter game, a lot of tradition. He said, don't let up. Now, Frank Solich, on the other hand, has tried to make an adjustment in the second half to counter the way that Texas is shutting down the option. They want to now establish an inside running game. He said, we know he can pass, but we got to live by the run. Nebraska trails again, as they did last week against Missouri. Prior to that, it was seven years before Nebraska found themselves behind at the end of the half. Now consecutive weeks. Option look, crouch, good runner, slips free. And he is a slippery one out to the 34-yard line. An eight-yard gain on first down for Crouch. Aaron Humphrey finally brings him down. TJ debates the uh, tight end. One of the tight ends for the Cornhuskers is down on the field. Cornhuskers came out in a two tight end set that time and tried to establish that inside run that uh, Jack Root was talking about. And this is it. You would think it would be Joel Makovica, but 
Crouch has had a lot of success today in a short time running the option inside and outside. Great balance that time, picking up extra yards. Here's TJ DeBates on the left side of the uh, screen here. Let's see exactly what that injury is. Oh man, that's a, that's a killer there. Doing his job working on the defensive end and he gets just blindsided down by the knee. That's, that's a killer. Young Tracy Wistrom, Grant Wistrom's brother, obviously will get some additional playing time now. And for you Cornhusker fans wondering about Grant and his progress as a defensive end with the St. Louis Rams. Last week in that loss to San Francisco, he played probably his best game as a member of the Rams. The Rams are down in Atlanta to play the Falcons tomorrow. Second down and one now for the Cornhuskers. Here's Crouch works the line and tries to extend out for the first down. This one's going to be very close. Crouch down for the play. Four, it is a first down, Nebraska. First down, Nebraska. Yes, Coach McBride. What's the difference when you see Solich down there running the team than in the days when Osborne was here? And uh, Mac laughs and says it was easier to find Osborne. There's about a foot difference over there on the sideline. First down and ten for Crouch. And the Huskers trailing by a touchdown. Pull back for the option to pass it. Slips down. He goes at the 32-yard line. Aaron Humphrey. Well, that's one thing Nebraska cannot do today is protect the quarterback. Five sacks for the Longhorns already. And number 49 is at the top of the screen. He's going to pick up his fifth sack of the year with this one. Good pressure by Hampton. And there is Humphrey bringing down the quarterback. Lance Brown and Cheatham check onto the field now for the Cornhusker. Sheldon Jackson, the tight end, is off to the right. Tracy Wistrom is the other tight end working with him. Play fake Buckhalter. Crouch fires. Got him out of bounds. And it's Lance Brown. Brown's had a foot problem just coming back last week against Missouri. That's his first catch of the day and second on the year, but Crouch did a nice job, didn't he? Got back in rhythm, got rid of that ball, goes off with a pretty strong arm. Leaving Nebraska with a third and four, trailing 10-3 and 1330 to go in the third. Cheatham is off to the right. Wiggins has come up into the slot formation. Davison is outside him, and here comes Crouch looking for Wiggins. Incomplete. Fourth down, Nebraska forced to punt again. Quentin Jammer jams another one. Now, Texas will try to be efficient here on their special teams. They have great respect for the ability of Nebraska with Hodges Mitchell standing on the horns 15 yard line. Just going to let this one go, trying to wave everybody off. And the Cornhuskers are going to down this one inside the 10 yard line. So I just thought it was a little too dangerous. And the Longhorns will have to start inside their own 10. Timeout. Ricky Williams, the number one rusher in the land, outrushing the entire Cornhusker backfield right now and averaging 4.8 a pop. And checking back in is Ralph Brown. Remember, he was shaken up toward the end of the first half. He's the best cover corner for Nebraska. The crowd trying to make it difficult. Down in the end zone for young Major Applewhite. Ricky Williams lined up behind him. Brown checks with him. He's the offset fullback. They'll run Ricky behind Brown. No more than a couple of yards, and he has stood up as Foreman breaks in, along with Mike Brown that time, the rover. And they swarm all over Ricky. Jack Aruf. Well, bro, let's tell you about T.J. DeBates right here on the sidelines. They vice down his left knee. The doctors report that it's an MCL injury to his knee, medial collateral ligament. You should not see him back for the rest of the day. Tough break for the young man. Second down and nine. Horns inside the 10-yard line. You look from behind Foreman as he eyes the quarterback and backs off the defense, and Applewhite is going to throw. Throws 
knocked away. Great coverage by Brown, who came back onto the field. And then eyes the Texas bench like, you're going to bring that stuff toward me, my friends, and I'm going to bat it away. Here's one of the finest corners in the college game. Yeah, number 22 in the slot here, and he knows right away that uh, Cavill is coming to the outside. He read this all the way by the receiver's release off the line of scrimmage and give Cavill some credit for this play right here, playing defensive back on Ralph Brown. Third down and nine. The Red climbs into it. But Major looks real calm as he points out a couple of things from the shotgun. White, one of his four wide receivers. Offensive line handles the blitz. Fires incomplete. McGarity, the intended receiver. And Ralph Brown over there again. Makes a play on each side of the field. And give an assist to this crowd, too. They may not have rattled Major Applewhite, but he's thrown two questionable passes in a row that could have been picked off. That ball wasn't even a spiral, as Ralph Brown is all over the receiver. Now Nebraska with that familiar punt return formation. Three deep men protecting the wings. Something Texas did not do in that last punt, but this is a tradition here, and you can see the wingman making the catch. There's a penalty flag down. I think he signaled for a fair catch. And then he took off. Let's hold on and uh, see what happens. Is Ralph Brown was over on that far side. Brett, the defender didn't give Ralph Brown that two yard halo or belt or whatever you want to call it. You got to give the receiver two yards to make the catch. Then they must have blown the whistle and blew the play dead. But you see that three deep formation for Nebraska paying off as that ball was kicked right to the wingman Ralph Brown. He's claiming he didn't make a fair catch. Signal. Interference with the opportunity to make a fair catch. Guess we kick it. Five yard penalty. First down. Don't see the fair catch signal there but there clearly uh, Greg Brown is inside that two yard limit. Oh, I think this is close. I think that's a bad call. Yeah I do too Brent. I don't, I don't think he was interfering with him at all. Doesn't matter now. First down and ten. Trick or treat, huh? Yeah. Weird things happen on Halloween. Ball is spotted at the Texas 31-yard line. Here's Eric Crouch, Nakavica, in front of Buckhalter. Buckhalter, the eye man, trying to slash right and find an alley. And he's swatted down at the 28-yard line by Lewis and Jammer. An ABC Sports presentation of college football brought to you by the new Silverado, the truck from Chevrolet, the most dependable, longest-lasting trucks by Devilly Investments, where 12 million investors put their trust. Coors Brewing Company and your local Coors distributor, 21 means 21. And Nason X. Second down and seven. Ball at the 28-yard line for Nebraska. They've trailed the entire game. Nakavica stopped and in a hurry by Casey Hampton. Working right in the middle of that defensive line. Casey reading the fullback beautifully that time, and 64 comes up with the stop. And Jack Arut said that uh, Nebraska wanted to get that inside power game going, and uh, they failed on the last two plays. Buckhalter and now Makavica. The only success they've had running the ball inside has been with the quarterback Eric Crouch. Cheatham and Wiggins check in on third and eight Wiggins in the slot and they have gone to him frequently in this formation. Buckhalter directly behind him. Deflected incomplete. A beautiful move by DeAndre Lewis the redshirt freshman from Houston. Went over and deflected the forward pass. Shevin Wiggins coming off in the slot, the intended receiver. That's a great play by Lewis. Watch as he reads the quarterback and then just follows the uh, flight of the ball and knocks it away. Picks up the quarterback right there and then just makes a heck of a play. So here is the field goal attempt. It's a 47-yarder. Right straight down the middle, perfect. 
Chris Brown tacks on three more points. The Horns' lead is trimmed to four, ten to six. Timeout. The only touchdown in this game came on the first possession of the afternoon by the Texas Longhorns. Defensive field goals and kicking, looking for field position. It has been critical. Hodges Mitchell fields it at the five. Cuts back to the middle and spins out to the 26-yard line. That is pretty good field position as far as Texas is concerned because take a look at their average starting position. Dan, their own 15-yard line, and that shows you how good the kicking game is here. Well, and it also brings the crowd into the game. This is a very intimate ballpark, and the end zones are very, very loud here. Remember, these folks, as fans, have something at stake, too. They've seen 47 straight wins here. There's some youngsters in this crowd who've never seen this team lose. Major Applewhite under center. Got a throw on first down. And it is complete to the 36-yard line. Wayne McGarity. And McGarity with his third reception of the day. Cavill with four. So between them, they've caught seven passes. With the completion. And McGarity uh, says he gets his hands underneath this one for a completion thrown real low by Applewhite. Let's check out these hands. Good job by McGarity as he rolls over quickly. It shows he has possession. To find Weidman. Brown knows. First down and 10. Derek Lewis, the tight end, is on the right side of the Texas formation. Here's Ricky Alley in the middle. Ricky explodes. And the black shirts had to hold on. You could see Johnson. You cannot let Williams free. It's a 15-yard run. Oh, watch the explosion, though, in the speed. Good job by Gas Camp and Raisler. They open up a huge hole. Too quick for the defensive line and the safety to close on. And now it takes three black shirts to bring him down. And Ricky Williams is over 100 yards today, folks. 103 yards with that carry. Texas. Nebraska territory. Applewhite fires complete to the... No incomplete. Linesman waves it off as the ball hits the ground. Nunez, the intended receiver. We get down to Jackaroo. Well, Brent Joel McAvicka did not make any sort of impassioned plea at halftime, but Tony Ortiz did during the last blow that the defense had on the sidelines. He went up to the black shirts, his fellow members of the defense, and challenged them to play the rest of the game the way they did that previous series. So far, they haven't done so this time out there. Second down and 10. That ace formation with the one back. But he's a pretty solid ace to have. Right in the hole for you, Ricky Williams. Bring him on, Allen. Breaks that first tackle time after time. Scouts have to be drooling as Mike Brown finally wraps him up. Now this will bring up a third down and five coming up here for the Texas Longhorns. Boy, Dan, you know how fast in the NFL somebody hits a running back after the snap. And you get away from that first man, that's what they look for. I love him as the first pick in the NFL draft next year. I'd take him because I know he could contribute immediately. Not like the quarterback position. Excellent point. Third down and five. Williams now is off as a flanker. Applewhite flanker screen's going to come out the other way, and it's dropped by McGarity. Incomplete pass. Wayne McGarity, it was an interesting formation as they sent Ricky out to the left to influence the defense, bring Roth Brown over there, and then throw the flanker screen back the other way, and Texas just didn't execute it. It was a good play. That was a good job of dropping that pass. I know McGarity will say that he did, but by dropping it, he saved a lot of yards. He was going to get knocked down for about a five-yard loss. Shevin Wiggins. High putt by Stockton. Wiggins going to let it bounce, and he takes a Nebraska hop out to the 19-yard line, and that's where they will put it in play. 8.44 to go in the third period. And Texas leading 10-6. Ricky Williams with 108 yards. Timeout. U.S. West 
Well, Dan, there's a defensive back who made a difference. Well, he certainly did. Uh, and remember, he got uh, dinged up in that first half, but Ralph Brown has done a great job. And speaking of uh, getting pressure on the quarterback, Eric Crouch has been knocked around. This includes a running place today, but the five sacks. That's great Texas defense. Eric Crouch under center with Akavica and Buckhalter behind him. And Buckhalter's hit in the backfield for a loss of three yards, stormed by Cedric Woodard. My boys, Woodard playing a strong game. Stopped by the play by Cedric Woodard. Well, Nebraska, they've got to get a better pass rush when they're on defense. But on offense here, I would say just keep running the option with Eric Crouch. Sooner or later, he's going to be able to pitch the ball back to Buckhalter and make a big play for the Cornhuskers offense. Second and 12. Cornhuskers might go looking for one of their tight ends this time. They run the option instead. And it's Buckhalter with an alley. And he somersaults over the 25-yard line, hit by Quinton Jammer, the free safety. Stopped on the play by Quinton Jammer. Boy, Jammer went real low against the 225-pound Buckhalter. We got that little bit of a cartwheel, didn't we? we? Certainly did. Third down and four here, Dan. So the Texas defense, that to me has been the surprise of the game. Holding Nebraska without a touchdown. And 7.30 to go in the third period. And they're back in third and four now. Can they force a three and out? Lance Brown and Cheatham onto the field as the wide receivers. Crouch rolls to the right. Fires. Incomplete. The receiver was out of bounds. Denny Cheatham. Incomplete. Out of bounds when he made the catch, and Nebraska is forced to punt. He was real close to being inbounds with that left foot right there. That's a great call by this man right here. Didn't have possession either. I think Texas fans are holding their breath every time the ball goes to that side of the field, my friend, to tell you the truth. Seven. Over there in front of that Nebraska bench, they haven't exactly been getting the best of it today, have they? I just Mitchell back feet now. Line drive kick. Mitch's calls it in at the 26. Down in a hurry. The 25 yard line. Well, the people have voted for a special election night hour of Spin City with the guest star, Lou Diamond Phillips. That'll be Tuesday night on ABC. Another sellout crowd. You can see the construction there on the left-hand side of your screen, the upper part. That, of course, will be luxury boxes, new press box, new broadcast booth. That'll be done in time for next fall's football season here. One of the great stops in college football. Lincoln, Nebraska. First down and 10. Corn Huskers trail it. Major Applewhite is ace. Ricky Williams for a couple of yards, and that's about it. So after contact, we have talked about it, and you can see, Dan, what he has accomplished. Yeah, you know, and this is why he's the best running back in the country. We've seen the explosive speed in the middle and to the outside, but you can't tackle him with one man or two men. Sometimes it takes three or four. And Nebraska doing a pretty good job at that, holding him to 38% of his yards after contact here today. That's way below his average. Second down and eight. Ball coming out from the 32-yard line. Fake the draw play. Apple White comes back in complete. And he wanted Ricky Williams that time, but Nebraska's penetration broke the play up, and he did not have time to get set. Chad Kelsey came in and made a powerful play defensively for Nebraska. Here's 57 at the bottom of the screen working against Aaron Humphreys, or rather, that's Jay Humphrey, and he just gets enough of Apple White to cause that incompletion. Defenses continue to dominate. Third down and eight. It's a four receiver package for Apple White. Back in the shotgun, gotta watch the clock, down to eight seconds. inside the 20 yard line. The son of Chuck buries Apple White. Number 44 is Foreman. There he is right there. It's a great stunt as he comes around the corner looking a lot like his dad finding a big hole and going in for the score. 
That sacks just like a score. Now Stockton with the three deep men on the punt return, hoping to give Nebraska field position in the kicking game. Hangs it high. Brown at midfield. Bobbles the ball, but out of bounds. And he did not make a fair catch signal as he fumbles that ball out of bounds, but at the 49-yard line. And there's a reminder about the PGA finale tomorrow coming your way. The Tour Championship, live to Eastern time. B.J. Singh, the leader after the third round. That's tomorrow on ABC. Here we have 5.41 to go. And two really bad punts for Stockton. Last two times, 24 yards, and that one only went 29 yards. Great field position for Nebraska. Jackson and Wistrom are the two tight ends. Half a football field away. Can they move the ball? Crouch steps away from the defense and it slips to the 42-yard line on that first down run with Aaron Humphrey. Taking the stop. Well, if Nebraska is ever to get it going offensively, this is the time. Playing with half a field right now. Billy Hafke checking in for Coach Solich, his first year after replacing the legend, Tom Osborne. Second down and three, ball on the 42-yard line. Here's Crouch again, follows the eye back across the 40-yard line. Ball carried by Crouch. Need to reach the 39, just inside it for the first down. Dusty Renfro defensively for the Longhorns. These are two pretty high scoring teams on the year. Nebraska averaging about 35 points a game and Texas better than that at 40 a game and we've got a 10 6 are gone. Pretty good defense today. They're down in short and Willie Miller checks in the last time they showed this Eric Crouch kept it. And again and then the two big fullbacks just kind of dive in over the top to push the pile forward and it's a first down for Nebraska. And that's not legal, but it's rarely called. He'll take it. Yeah, we saw Miller in the first half push the quarterback for a first down and first get it again. Down. Here's the first down, and they show that power set again. Crouch keeps it, and the man cleaned it up on that play was Anthony Hicks. Did you hear the plastic pop when he stuck him with his pads? He got him good. Well, Jermaine Anderson spun him around, uh, spun Crouch around, and uh, that's like hitting a home run on putting the ball on the tee, the batting tee, and whacking away Anthony Hicks with a big hit there on Crouch. Cheatham and Brown check in as the wideouts to the right. Dodge brings it down to the left and breaks into the secondary. Touchdown, Nebraska! Their first lead of the game, a 37-yard run for Eric Crouch. Ago, the longest play against Missouri was 16 yards. Here today, when they need it most against Texas, Eric Crouch, the redshirt freshman, keeps it and dashes 37 yards. And now Chris Brown, this PAT would boost the Huskers to a three-point lead, and they are up now 13-10. Nebraska has had trouble with the option going wide today, but not in the middle. Watch after the fake to Makavica. Right there, Crouch sees a huge hole right in the middle. No safeties are up there because they're all looking for the option to the outside. That's that inside power game that the coaches were talking about. Dusty Renfro gets blocked there by Sherman and buried by Sherman. And great speed by Eric Crouch. And nobody is even close to closing on him. Watch 
Josh Jammer, number six, go to the outside, thinking the option's going to go there. He gets blocked. For the Huskies, including by Chris Bryant. And Crouch is just picking his heels up, heads for the end zone. 93 yards rushing for Eric Crouch. Hodges, Mitchell, and Jeremy Jones are back deep for Brown's kickoff. Mitchell runs up to the 14 yard line. go at the 21 yard line. Texas will put it in play there. And so Crouch the 14 carries for the 93 yards. Nebraska's first touchdown of the game. He also is four of eight passing for another 42 yards. And give some credit to the Black Shirts too since that first quarter. They have really turned things around. the horns to Bill and McGarity the wide men Williams nothing doing they jump him right at the point of attack Wiltz is there watch Ricky Williams once he gets the ball he's got nothing but red shirts in front of him there's Wiltz number 99 and he wraps them up before he can even get back to last limit. Derek Lewis's only reception today was the touchdown catch on the opening drive of the game for the Horns. Applewhite starts Cavill in motion toward the line, comes back. Penalty flags come flying. Long pass, incomplete drop by the fullback, Ricky Brown. But I don't think it matters. I think Texas is about to be called for holding. more intensity on the part of the Nebraska front. You know, Applewhite had a lot of time to throw at first, but number 79 right there, that is uh, Ben Adams. He pulls down Wiltz as Wiltz tries to make two plays in a row. These players take a lot of pride in this 47 straight home wins. Chad Kelsey says, do we think about it? We think about it every minute of every practice of every day. Haven't lost here since 1991. And the holding call will take the ball back inside the 10 where it is ever so tough for a quarterback to hear. Because of the uh, penalty in the backfield, that turns out to be an 18-yard penalty against Texas. From the spot of the foul, and it makes it second and 28 for Apple White and the Horns. Draw play, Ricky goes left. Brown's out there, and he pushes him out. The corner comes up and breaks up the sweep by Ricky Williams and his buddy, Rover Mike Brown. He has rushed today for 110 yards and 23 carries. A better performance than against Kansas State. Boy, Texas has had problems with their last five times on third down, failing to convert. This is going to be a tough one. 27 yards to go. Third down and 27. going to let this one go a little bit high. He really drops down on his delivery here. 
almost coming sideways as he gets hit right there. The ball goes over Nunez's head right to the cornerback, Brown, who's playing a zone defense here. His second interception of the year, but that was good pressure up front by Julius Jackson as he got right to Applewhite as he let the ball go. Tackled by Ricky Williams. And now the Huskers, 12 yards away. See if Eric Crouch goes for the juggler immediately. Buckhalter pounds the middle, breaks a tackle, carries another defender to the eight-yard line. Buckhalter, a six-foot sophomore, carries the loaded eye back to Angelo Evans, missing his third game in a row because of that injured tailbone. Dan Alexander is the backup, but Buckhalter has gone the distance here today. Seven carries for 14 yards. Now this is second down and six. Fullback, Makavica. Perhaps a yard on the play. Time remaining in the third quarter, third quarter in the upper corner there on the right-hand side. A couple of the black shirts. The two safeties changes things. When Finley came back into the lineup, he was hurt in the last scrimmage, and of course they could put him at three and then move Brown over to that rover spot. Nebraska awful good in the red zone. Billy Miller in there with Macabic and Buckhalter. Third and five. Crouch brings it. And he is spun. Texas recovers. Texas recovered at the four-yard line. Donald McCowan, the sophomore from Dallas. And I believe it was J.J. Kelly, number 84, that punched this ball loose. Here's Kelly in the line of scrimmage here. Crouch with the option down the line. Hicks is there first. But watch Kelly with the left hand just kind of swatted out of there. What a huge, huge turnover for Texas. They take over, trailing by three. The coach with Crouch on the far side. But can the Horns move the ball? Brown and Williams into the backfield behind Applewhite. Brown offsets to the right. Williams left side, muscles his way to the 19-yard line, a first down, and Ricky Williams on the attack that time. Remember, at the top of the broadcast, he told you he would deliver the blow. Boy, does he ever. 11-yard gain here, but this is, he's going to get hit by Brown about five yards into the secondary and then just take the safety. About six more. 25 carries for 122 yards for Ricky Williams and the Horns. With a first down at the 19-yard line now. The toss play to Ricky. He's going to throw it. The baseball player under throws. Incomplete. And it is a very good thing that Mike Brown did not pick up the flight of that ball. I never should have mentioned he was a baseball player, folks. Forget that I said that. Okay. Well, he completed one last year for a touchdown. But that one there, uh, good job of recognition by the secondary Mike Brown having a heck of a day we talk about Ralph he's having a good one too but Mike has been on in on 13 tackles already second down and 10 if nothing else Mac hopes that that'll loosen up the secondary just a little bit on Rick Applewhite to the middle a bouncing ball incomplete Derek Lewis the intended receiver and it was a one hopper to him we have seen Applewhite now uh, hit just one of his last eight passes, and I've seen him throw at least three balls. Remember the one catch was the, the one by McGarity that McGarity had to go down and catch before it hit the turf. No such luck on this one. He's throwing a lot of low balls in this second half. Leaving him at 9 of 18 for the game for 131 yards. He's 
thrown one touchdown and one interception in this game. Ten seconds left in the third quarter from the shotgun. Needs ten. Gonna go deep, got White wide open, got it! Midfield, 35, 30, 20, out of bounds at the five-yard line. The senior, Brian White, in the fourth pack. A 76-yard pass play from Apple White to White. Brings it in to the third quarter. Stay tuned, folks. The final one's gonna be a dandy. Well, Nebraska leads it by three, but maybe not for long. Here's Brian White and Erwin Sweeney. Watch the great move, and then down the sideline as Sweeney takes a peek into the backfield trips, and then White's down the sideline, and watch the great speed by Mike Brown as he comes from nowhere to knock White out of bounds. Now Texas, as we start the fourth quarter with a first and goal from the five-yard line. Ricky Williams has been touchdown Ricky down here pounds away toward the two already with 71 career touchdowns the NCAA record the young man Brian White who caught that pass out of Deer Park Texas the young man who returned kicks during his career for the Texas Longhorns when he was back in high school he was coached by Ron Lynch who was an all-state 5A wide receivers wide receiver he also was a swimming baseball and track letterman in high school good all-around athlete second down and two the ball is at the two did they come back with touchdown Ricky here he comes pounding the black shirts ready it'll be third and goal as Joe Walker along with Tony Ortiz lead max defense that time watch the penetration of Nebraska Kelsey gets there first and then over the top gang tackling and Ricky didn't have a chance. Now Max signals in the defense late. He waits for the offense to send in their play. Here it is folks third down and goal from the three yard line. Apple White to throw slant incomplete. Down by three, they'll send the field goal unit onto the field. Mac Brown does not hesitate in this situation to go for the tie. Good job by Erwin Sweeney that time, taking away the slant route of Wayne McGarity as McGarity stopped on the route. A 20-yard field goal attempt for Chris Stockton. We're tied in Lincoln. A turn of events. Nebraska marching toward its second touchdown. Suddenly fumbles, and Texas has a life. Then they strike deep, 76 yards to Brian White, the senior wide receiver who makes a great move. But Nebraska holds Texas to a tying field goal. I'm out. Chris Stockton ready to kick it off. We're deadlocked at 13. 13 and a half minutes to go. Regulation time from Lincoln, Nebraska. A short kickoff this time. Walker going to run up. Did he touch it? Out of bounds. Out of bounds at the 18-yard line inside the 20. And Brian White's having himself a couple of great minutes here, Dan. Well, he went 76 yards with one. This is a good hold here. The ball hits the ground. He spins it just in time for Stockton to come through and tie this game up. That was a pretty good play by Joe Walker of knocking that ball out of bounds there on that kickoff. And it's a break for Texas because if it goes out of bounds without him touching it, they get the ball in a lot better field position than this 18-yard line. So there are our leaders as far as Nebraska is concerned. Eric Crouch. And this is Buck Halter. Spins free and finally brought down. 11 yards a tough run for Buckhalter and let's check in with John Saunders Brenton Burger King play of the day Tennessee's T Martin had his way with South Carolina today peerless price hooks up with him here for 72 yards 
three NCAA records for T. Martin, including 23 straight completions and 24 straight during a season. It is first and 10 for Nebraska. Crouch comes down and picks up four more yards off of that option play. Anthony Hicks defensively for the Horns. The key for Texas will be stopping the option. Eric Crouch a little quicker in dealing the option. And that's 100 yards now for the young man. In 16 carries, he's the leading rusher. Ricky Williams has rushed for 124 yards. Crouch, the redshirt freshman. Second down and six. McAvicka steps in motion. They pound back with Buckhall. They're short of the first down that time. And ABC Sports presentation of college football brought to you by Ford F-Series. The best-selling trucks are built for tough. Bud Light for the great taste that won't fill you up and never let you down. Make it a Bud Light. Nicoderm CQ, the power to calm, the power to comfort, the power to help you quit. And State Farm Insurance, like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Third down and three coming up for Nebraska. Texas defense has been keeping Nebraska in third and three, third and four. Not giving them third and one that often in this game, and it has made a difference. Watch now, barking out something to Shevin Wiggins in the slot. Going to throw near side wide open with Jackson to tie in. First down, Nebraska. Out of bounds at the 49 yard line. McCowan, the defender. Yeah, he was talking to Wiggins, who was in the slot on the other side of the field. So Eric Crouch uh, coming here to his tight end, who's wide open here. Where is the man covering him? It's McCowan, and he is way off on a third down and short yardage situation. You got to be a lot closer to your responsibility. Tracy Wistrom in as a second tight end. Jackson to the left side of the formation. 11.42 in regulation. Couch follows the fullback to daylight. That has happened frequently here. Jammer making another stop. Jammer on the stop. Just can't say enough about uh, Crouch's ability to run this option. Pulls the ball out of Makovic's stomach and then finds another big hole. And look at this tackle by Jammer. Bobby Newcomb, not in uniform. Injured knee. He's given the entire game off. He hopes that rest will bring it back. Second down and two. Makovica is slammed in the hole that time. Nowhere to go. Casey Hampton and Anthony Hicks. When you defense the option, you've got to stop the fullback first. And especially with Nebraska. Makovica, one of the best fullbacks Nebraska's ever had. But so far today, Texas has done a great job of stopping him. They just can't find a way to stop the quarterback. Makovica, five carries, ten yards. Dan averaging only two yards a carry so far in this game. And it is third down and one. Here's the toss play to Buckhalter. First down, still going. Powering his way inside the 35. Great run by Alexander, who had replaced Buckhalter. And Dan Alexander steps into the game. Fresh legs and they're real big legs. Six foot tall, 250 pounds. Watch Alexander run over the safety jammer right there. Now he's going to take on a little cornerback in Tony Holmes. Get out of my way. 17 yard. First down, the ball at the Horns, 30 yard line. Nebraska. Nakavica is saddled at the 29 yard line. It is tough going for the fullback. That time it was Sean Rogers defensively for the horn. And you see that red paint on the top of Makovica's helmet. That's from the end in the middle of the field where the uh, Longhorns have planted the fullback a couple of times today. Second down and nine. Alexander coming back again to the 25-yard line. 
Dusty Renfro with the stop. Let's take a look at primetime football, ESPN Sunday night. Oakland goes into Seattle. Should be a tough war up there in Seattle between those two AFC West teams. Dallas, Philadelphia, Monday night on ABC. Troy Aikman returns. That should be a layup against the Eagles the way they played this year. They're at the 25 yard line with a third and five. Dan Alexander stays in his eye back. Fake to him by Crouch. Crouch goes to Wistrom. Off his fingertips incomplete. Tracy Wistrom, the freshman tight end, had a step on the defender, but couldn't hang on. And I'm not sure he really had to dive for this one. Watch him go to the corner, and he's going to use real good speed to get open here. Working against Tony Holmes. This ball is well thrown. Maybe take one more step before you dive. Chris Brown onto the field to attempt a 42-yard field goal. He's made a 47-yarder today. Also a 27-yarder, but he didn't miss a 37. So this from 42. Plenty of distance, and he puts Nebraska ahead again. Nebraska 16, Texas 13. Time out. 25 years. Nebraska Temperature in the 40s. It's been gray all day, but the rain has held off, and you wonder about the fellows, especially from Texas, playing on their first cold weather game of the year. Sometimes that can tire you down a little bit. The late going. Mitchell from a yard deep in the end zone. He smacked pretty good at the 15 that time by Tony Ortiz, young man out of New York. Well, college football, Penn State, Michigan next Saturday. That's the leadoff game of the double dip in, uh, here in Big 12 country. It's either Colorado, Missouri, or Oklahoma State and Texas. So check your local listings. You know, Brent, you talked about the cold weather. I think more of the, than, uh, than that may be the fact that Nebraska's getting back to the option and running the ball. 23 rushes in the second half. That will wear you down more than anything. And that lick wore Hodges Mitchell down, didn't it? Need to drive the major Applewhite under center again for the horns. Backs are split. They'll hand off now this time. And Ricky. Running from the split backs that time to the 18 and into the arms of Mike Brown, number 21. So it's 28 carries for 127 yards here today for Ricky Williams, who needed to average only 111 the rest of the way when the game started to smash Tony Dorsett's all time rushing number. Coming up now with a second and seven. Williams keep him split. Be a passing formation. Apple White throws, drop. Ball was flat out dropped by Cavill that time. Should have had it. Would have been close to a first down. Young man knows, no excuse. And dare I say, you could Kwame a river when you drop a ball like that. <laughs> Drink the treat, baby. You've been waiting all game, haven't you? Absolutely. Look, I've got it written down right here. Kwame a river. <laughs> Mr. White's back in the game along with Nunez. Four wideouts. Here's third down and seven. Mac Brown in Texas not wanting to give it back right now. Out of the shotgun. Nebraska presses the line of scrimmage. Now they drop back a little bit. And uh, Nebraska, Kelsey is saying that he was pulled off by the tackle that time. Well, this is going to be an interesting call because Kelsey was well into the backfield before Humphrey moved. Unless he flinched first. Unless he flinched first. Did not see the flinch. Prior to the snap, offside on the defense. That is a huge penalty, ladies and gentlemen. That brings Ricky Williams suddenly back into this equation, okay? And what Humphrey is doing is uh, protecting his quarterback by coming out of his stance there. Yeah. Chelsea was deep into that backfield. When you get up in third and two, that's a whole lot different than third and seven when you've got number 34 in your backfield. That's a great point. 
And you know, number 34 is either going to be handed the ball or at least fake to. And they're going to call a timeout. I think the entire Texas coaching staff realizes what they've got here and they don't want to make a mistake. Timeout. The Black Shirts hope that this defense shows up in the second quarter. Ricky Williams held to five yards in five carries. Now the Nebraska D will get set for a third and two with 7.39 to go. The Huskers leading the Longhorns. 16-13. Kelsey, their outstanding defensive end, flexes outside and they'll be checking Ricky. And Applewhite goes back again in the shotgun. Shovel pass maybe, inside handoff. As a receiver, Nunez in motion. They overload right side. Applewhite throws, got it. First down, Nunez, the motion man to the 32-yard line. The transfer from Colorado makes the first down for Texas. Huge third down conversion for Texas, especially in the light of the fact they've only converted one of their last eight prior to that. None bigger than that one for Major Applewhite as he finds Nunez for the first down. And of course, Nebraska had to be conscious in third and two of where 34 would go. 7.20 to go now, back in the eye formation. Apple White flares back, got him complete to the 46 yard line, Wayne McGarity. And McGarity with four catches on the day and 40 some yards on the afternoon for the Horns. It looks like the uh, Nebraska defense is really concerned with the speed of McGarity. Brown was off them that time. McGarity is a 4-3 guy who can really stretch the defense. First down for the Horns at the seven-minute mark. Down by three. Before the snap. Going to cost Texas apparently five. Prior to the snap, ball starts on the offense. Hurts Max offense right now. What a job this man has done with this defense. They have held Nebraska here this afternoon to 176 yards rushing. And most of the damage being done by Crouch. 108 of those yards by the quarterback. Alexander, 42 yards. Buckhalter, 18. So they have shut down on the eyebacks. And it's first down at 15. who got to Corby Jones at the end of last Saturday's game and knocked him on the artificial turf to end that baby. Well, he's the fastest guy on this Nebraska team, if you can believe that. Eric Johnson, 27 right there. He's only about 205 pounds. Shows his speed and quickness and agility as he jumped over a blocker to get the sack. Second and 21 for the horn. And not a chance. The receiver was sandwiched between a couple of the black shirts. Well, Major Applewhite should realize that you're not going to pick it all up in one play. You got double coverage on your receiver way down the field. Come off to somebody else. Just get some positive yardage and make your third down play a little bit more makeable. Third down and 21 at the 540 mark. Steps away, fires far side, wide again, and he's got it. White has made another big play. Out of bounds around the 25-yard line to keep Texas alive. 
They come back to him for 37 yards. Good job by Applewhite stepping up in the pocket. No pressure at all until it's too late for Nebraska. Watch White work the sideline here. Does he have it? Yes! Barely! Two catches, 113 yards. And a first and 10 at the 28-yard line. Texas trailing by three in regulation. Five and a half to go. Brown checks it back with Williams. Here's the toss play to Ricky. Ricky stretches. Can he get turned? Brown will let him turn, and he's out of bounds. Penalty flag. There's a face mask. A face mask as they were going out of bounds. Now, what we're going to see is we're going to see Ricky Williams with the stiff arm. and Brown retaliates by reaching for Ricky Williams' face mask. This is legal right here. This is Mike Brown here reaching there and grabbing the face mask. What Ricky Williams is doing is legal. What Mike Brown is doing, 15 yards. Think it'll be a 15 yard? Officials make it sure before they spot the ball here. Crowd not happy with it. It's not exactly 15 yards. It's half the distance to the goal line. They marched it down, Dan, inside the 15. They put it down at the 13-yard line. Now that's a mathematical mistake right there. Where the penalty happened. And they, they marched off 15 from there. First down and 10. Ball is at the 13-yard line. They offset Brown to the left. Ricky steps back into the hole and crosses the 10 to the 9-yard line before Eric Johnson makes the stop again. A check in now with Jack Aroot. Very quickly, Brent Hodges Mitchell, you should not see him the rest of the game because he has injured an ankle. They iced it down. They'll evaluate it after the game. All right, Jack, and for Ricky Williams, who you went down and interviewed this week, and uh, as you reported, he was ever so gracious as he is. He's carried 30 times for 131 yards. Second down and six. to the four-yard line. Great patience. Did you watch Ricky as he sort of crouched down with that great vision of his? And rarely does he let a defender get a square shot at him. The eyes of Ricky Williams sees the entire field. There's Ricky Brown with a block on Johnson. Now watch. None of the Cornhuskers really get a clean shot on Ricky as he twists and turns his body and gets close to a first down. Let's hear what Williams has to say about being possessed of great vision. It's a wonderful soundbite. Here's Ricky. When, when you're in a zone, it's, I mean, it's amazing because you, you see from this sideline to this sideline, it's, it's amazing because you can, you can be looking right at this guy, but you can still see this guy really, really well. And I mean, it's just great. You hit the hole and you're like, okay, I got to make this guy miss, make this guy miss, and then, you know, just look for, for it. There's always that, like, the clear that you see, an open field, and you just hit it and try to go. All great athletes seem to have great vision. Texas just inches short of the first down. Here comes your third down and less than a yard for the Horns. Mac Brown with a tough decision to make if the Horns don't pick up the first down. They're down by three. They're off to the left hash. Did not need much. He was inches away. He's telling the bench that he picked it up, checking the clock. 4.25 to go in the game. And being 17-point underdog in here, you would think that Texas right now would go for the juggler in regulation. So 
here's your first down and goal. And this was the play that gave Texas the life late in the going in Lincoln, Nebraska. Brian White, who caught one earlier for 76 yards, gets his left foot down. And remember in the college game, only one foot down is needed. Now, first and goal. Ricky Williams, 71 touchdowns in his fabulous career. Will he fall Brown to the right? They motion in that direction. Ricky, Ricky steps. Ricky dives to the one. Backs his way in, and now it'll be second and goal, and you got to believe that they'll pound with 34 again. Mac Brown from the old school. You put the ball in the hands of your best athlete in this situation. Solich hoping to get it back with plenty of time if Texas does score down here. This drive started on the 15-yard line, and this is the 13th play of the drive, and I bet 13 is a lucky number for Ricky Williams. said just give me a shot at 34 all I want is a little daylight and he crept in and got in behind him they lined up right on the line of scrimmage you got underneath the blocking but how many tackles can Mike Brown make in one day 18 so far today remember he stopped white from going in on that long pass play too gonna use a timeout this is huge coming up here third down and goal when we come back timeout we make the turn to November, which is going to be one of the greatest months in recent college football history. So many big games, so many big moments. And here comes one of them right now. Third down and two for Texas. Huge underdog here in Lincoln against Nebraska. Ricky Williams, they offset his fullback, lead blocker Brown to the right. Now they send Williams out in motion over to the left side of the field as a wide receiver. Apple White's going to throw on third down. Rolling, tossing, diving, touchdown, Texas! Great pattern, Wayne McGarrity, a diving catch! Not the expected call by Mac Brown's staff. They cross Nebraska up completely. Send Williams out of the backfield in motion and throw the other way. And stay alive as a quarterback. Keep running, keep running until you find somebody. McGarrity cuts back across the grain and makes a great catch. Now Stockton, an important extra point. It makes it a four-point Longhorn lead. But still a lot of time for the big red machine, 247. You know, last week, Applewhite ad lived on a play on a two-point conversion when he shoveled the ball forward. That was a great throw by Major Applewhite. It's a four-point lead for Texas. Timeout. The hour grows late in Lincoln, Nebraska. And the nation's longest home winning streak is on the line with 2.47 to go. Can the Horns make it stick up? A short kickoff into the wind. Walker's got it at the 10-yard line. Nebraska should get decent field position. Stretches out to the left to the 20-yard line. And again, Nebraska in a tight finish. Remember Oklahoma State? They went to Arrowhead. They played this one in Kansas City. The Cowboys trying for the winning touchdown, but Nebraska stuffs it. But then it was Texas A&M, and Nebraska did not prevail on the road. The pick by the Aggies, and they come up with the upset. Then last week, Corby Jones and Johnson was on him, whacking him to the artificial turf. And now back at it again. First and 10 coming out from the 23-yard line, 77 yards away with Dan Alexander, the eye back. Here's Alexander, plays through the middle! Alexander off the bench to the 44-yard line! A 21-yard run by Alexander, who has picked it up at the eye-back spot. Right up the middle, this offensive line takes control here. It's a little trap block there by... 
Jackson, number 63, and the power of Alexander. From the 45-yard line, first down. Alexander hit in the backfield by number 55, Anthony Hicks. Timeout has been called by Nebraska. They used their first timeout here at the 209 mark. We're coming right back at you. It would have been easy to have been a football player and not a student. And conversely, it would have been much easier to have been just a student and left football for some other day and time. But it wouldn't have been as joyous, as rich, as humbling to have been one without the other. So for all of us, I say thank you from the bottom of my heart, not for a single award on a single night, but for the many memorable and molding moments that we have had the privilege to call ourselves student athletes. The thrifty car rental postgame report is coming up. John Saunders and Todd Blackledge have all the scores and highlights from around the country. And right now, this figures to be the story of the day. If Texas can make it hold up, or if Nebraska can pull it out. There's the date, September 21st, 1991. 47 ball games ago against the Washington Huskies that went on to win the national championship that year. Three-yard loss on that play by Hicks. Great defensive play. Second down and 13. Buckhalter checks back in the game. And Crouch from the shotgun hit on the release, and he's got Wiggins out of bounds at midfield. This will put Nebraska in a third and five after the catch by Shevin Wiggins. And even though they went out of bounds with the reception, Nebraska on the line of scrimmage. Four wideouts, two timeouts, half a field to negotiate. High, Davis in the intended receiver. And it has come down to a fourth down for Nebraska. At the two minute mark, Nebraska just looked uh, out of sync there as they lined up at the line of scrimmage after the reception the receiver got out of bounds and the receivers again aren't even going back to the huddle. Buck Halter alongside Eric Crouch and on fourth and six fires high incomplete Texas takes over at the 49 yard line 158 to go. Nebraska has two timeouts to use. Anthony Hicks applying the pressure and the Longhorns closing in on one major upset here in Lincoln, Nebraska. All right, Nebraska's passing game looked absolutely terrible on this drive. When they needed it most, they didn't huddle up. They didn't uh, get their protection squared away Anthony Hicks with the pressure that time and Crouch was nowhere near his receiver Richard Walton comes in Major Applewhite was injured on the touchdown pass that put Texas ahead Major Applewhite injured and the senior Richard Walton with Ricky Williams behind him and Williams for about half a yard he has gained 137 yards here today Mike Rucker Making the stop, Nebraska quickly uses its second timeout, desperately hoping to get the football back with enough time so they can do something about it. And Richard Walton uh, is coming back from a broken index finger on his throwing hand. But what a luxury to have a senior come in in a crucial time like this. Mike Brown's real lucky to have Walton as his backup quarterback today. Second down and nine. Ricky Williams today, 34 carries for 138 yards. He would be the man that you would expect to attempt to kill this clock right now. There is Applewhite, injured on his touchdown pass. The young hero, take a look at the pounding. Rucker coming in behind and up over the top, another defensive player. Joe Walker with the big hit up at the quarterback's head. That was not called. So the major watches. And the 
Tennant steps in. Here's Richard Wolf. Second down and nine. They stretch the clock. Ricky breaks a tackle to the 40. Cut it, 38-yard line. And Ricky Williams is 11 yards closer to a Heisman Trophy. There is no stopping Ricky Williams in that pursuit this season. This is a huge game in his quest. Remember against Kansas State, they held Ricky Williams to 43 yards and 25 carries. Everybody wondered what he would do when he stepped up against Nebraska. Well, folks, he's gained 149 yards and 35 carries. Closing in on Tony Dorsett, a man who admires Ricky. And Ricky has handled this fame so very well down in Austin. Ricky, of course, now on target for the Heisman. And Jack Arute asked him if the Heisman hype was getting old for him, and here's what he had to say. No, it's just getting new, I think, because right now I'm actually, you know, putting up numbers and, and helping the team win for the first time. I feel like a, a real Heisman candidate. And his numbers today are pretty impressive, too. 151 yards. And then he's got some tough games ahead of him. Oklahoma State, Texas Tech, both held him to under 100. And uh, you can see how their defenses have played this year. Those are the three teams left in his quest. But our Chevrolet players of the game, Major, you did a great job today. I know Ricky Williams is the celebrity on that team, but young man, that touchdown pass, that was something for a redshirt freshman. And Mike Brown, he tackled everybody. 18 tackles for Mike Brown here today for Nebraska. We check in with Jack Aru. Jack? Grant, let me update you on Major Applewhite. He has suffered from a slight concussion. That's why they've made, it, made, made him go down towards the locker room. They wanted him to go in, and Major refused. He said, I want to see the end of this game. Can't blame him. Can't blame him at all. No, no really, I mean, you would want, wouldn't want to be in the locker room when the celebration's going to hit here in about a minute and 12 seconds, all right? Would you? 112. They get another concussion in the celebration. Here's Ricky. Hold on to the ball. You can hear the coaches <laughs> at the sideline. Hold the ball. Just hold the ball, Ricky. Down toward a minute. Nebraska out of timeouts. His first year, he embraced all the grand old traditions of Texas, especially one icon, Daryl Royal. Mac Brown is uh, mad to replaced another legend, Frank Solich. Uh, not so happy today on that far side. You know, his approval rating in the uh, Omaha newspaper this morning, I noticed, was 82%. I hope they don't re-poll about an hour after this game, you know. Sports fans can tend to be rather fickle sometimes. Well, there was only 1% that disapproved, and whatever the difference there is, 17% had no again. idea what they were talking Five about. Five yard penalty, still third down. So Ricky Williams chasing the legend, Tony Dorsett, now needs 295 yards. From Patrick Henry High School in San Diego. Now, you know, San Diego's been known for throwing the ball a little bit with San Diego State and, and the Chargers, Gilman and Coriel. What about Marcus Allen and Ricky Williams? A couple of Heisman Trophy, well, one Heisman Trophy winner, maybe another one. They're down in 14 as the final seconds tick away. Texas, a winner, an upset winner again, twice in a row. Two years ago, they went to the inaugural Big 12 championship game and stunned Nebraska. And here today, they come in to Lincoln and snap a 47-game home winning streak. The first road team to win in Lincoln since Washington back in 1991. And they do it in stunning fashion, 20 to 16. It was a touchdown pass by Major Applewhite that won the game as he rolled out to the right. Picked up the winning receiver, and it was 20 16. Jack Aroot and Dan Fouts. I'm Brent Musburger. So long, everybody.